Lift up your eyes, look at the fields, the harvest is right. Lift up your eyes, here are the two. First Samuel chapter 16. You are God's choice. People may not like you for one reason or another. And they may put you in a position that you don't belong. It is obedience is the highest level of our worship. So lost the kingship because he stopped obeying the Lord. And Samuel the prophet is very disappointed and mourning before the Lord, king who had been rejected. Chapter 16, where we read, God rebukes Samuel. He says, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing that I have rejected? And God says, I have a replacement for him. This scares me. To think that there is nobody who is indispensable. When you become irresponsible in what God has given you, he will anoint a replacement. The Holy Ghost comes upon you for your advancement to your destiny. Jesus could not fulfill his purpose until when he was anointed and the Holy Ghost came upon him. And the anointing in your life will begin to demonstrate what is in the inside of you. Because God has chosen you. God, despite of all this, looked at the inside of you and saw a worshiper. And when he saw a worshiper, he anointed you for worship. He brought you out of religiosity so that you can come into his presence with thanksgiving, with music and dance and praise. That you may give him glory. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for every good work. We are not created to do nothing. We are created in Jesus for good works. And good works will come because the Lord is with us. And you are a mighty man of valor. A man of war. That means you can fight anything that works against your purpose. God knows you can handle it. You know, he knows you can handle those demons. He knows you can deal with everything that is trying to, put, to bring down your family. He knows you are a prayer warrior. You can get into the spirit and bind and whatever you bind is bound in heaven. And whatever you lose is loosed in heaven. This is not time to begin to look for nice things. It is time to look to fulfill the purpose. You are created for greatness. And there are demon spirits. There are forces of darkness. There are people used of the devil who will try to stop God's purpose in your life. That's why God uh, calls you a mighty man. Don't look at the things that you have failed before. You failed because you didn't know who you were. Amen. But now after you know who you are, you become a conqueror. The only reason why you failed when you failed is because you did not know that you were a conqueror. You are a mighty man of all. Gideon was in the caves with others, other cowards. And an angel of the Lord appears to him and says, Oh mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. 
Mighty men of valor, Gideon said, what are you talking about? I'm living in the caves. Where are the miracles? Where is the power that we used to hear about? I'm, I'm not seeing anything. You are supposed to be bringing down those things that are trying to bring you down. And I come this morning to say, stop being a nice Christian. Be like the woman who told the man of God, all oh, men of God don't lie to me. And when the devil came and killed her miracle, she did not bury it. And she did not seek for sympathy, even from her husband. Laid him on the bed that she had prepared for her destiny. And she took the boy and laid him on the, on the bed of Elisha. Say to their servant, go and bring me a donkey and a cup. I need to rush to see the man of God. The husband said, it is not the Sabbath. It is not a new moon. Why do you need to go to see the servant of God? She knew that this woman takes her offering to the man of God. And when she comes to the man of God, the man of God sees the chariot rushing. Says, there is a Shunammite woman coming. There's the rush. Go and find out. Is everything all right with her? With her? her son, her husband. Is everything all right at home? The woman comes and, uh, uh, and Gazi says, is everything all okay? Gazi says, all is well. In other words, it's none of your business. I'm not coming to you, Gazi. I am going to the one I am connected to. When God anoints us, he anoints us to help others are you going to tap an anointing this morning to help others i say you're going to tap an anointing this year is not a year just to receive it is a year to give it is a year to help those that need you there are people out there that need your help there are children there are families there are orphans there are, there are sick people demon possessed people out there that need your help and that's why you need to tap into the anointing. I want to change the concept this morning. The concept of church. This is what people think church is. They think church is a place where you go and submit yourself to a pastor who will preach to you and teach, teach you and baptize, baptize you and your children. Dedicate them to the Lord. Wed them when they grow up. Bury them when they die. This is man's idea about church. Church is a place to come to be discipled into your destiny. It's not a place to come because it is Sunday. It is a place to come because your life and your future depends on where you have connected your life with. Jesus in Matthew 28 said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Make disciples of all nations. He didn't tell us to go and look for followers. There are so many churches today that are happy when people come and fill the auditoriums on Sunday morning, they, and they have got three services, they have got four services, and they, they are happy, good offering, and everything is just nice. And, uh, and after that, these people scatter until next Sunday. This concept is not God's concept of the church. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let me tell you what that means. It means God, Jesus came to build a movement that cannot be stopped by anybody or anything. How is that going to, to happen? Through the five Ford ministries. He chose some Ephesians, Ephesians 4 and 11 to be apostles some to be prophets some to be evangelists some to be pastors and teachers 
for the equipping of the saints. You are here to be equipped so that you may fulfill your destiny and you may do the work of the ministry. And as you do the work of the ministry, all the things that you need for this life shall be added. We need to disciple you into the will of God. The will of God for you is that you may prosper in all things and be in good health even as your soul prospereth. David was a mighty man. What did they become? Read at the end of the life of David. It says, and these are the mighty men of David. And the 400 are mentioned by name and what they did. They fought like David because David was a man of war. They did mighty things like David because David was a mighty man of valor. God has chosen you for greatness. And you can never be great unless you are joined yourself to a man who is great.